Hi, and welcome to GIELTSHELP.com's General IELTS Test Preparation videos. In this video, you will see a native English American who would score a band 9 for his performance on this interview. After the interview, I will explain why a native English speaker may need to take the IELTS exam, as well as why this candidate would likely score a band 9. For lots more help with the general IELTS, including over 100 hours of video lessons, 6 full exams with audio, and an interactive course to help you improve your band scores, join us at GIELTSHELP.com. Now watch and learn. Welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. May I see your identification, please? Yes, you may. Thank you. And uh, what is your full name? Well, my last name is Buchanan. My first name is Davis, but please call me Dave. Okay, Dave, uh, here is your identification back. Thank you. And I'm going to record this for marking purposes. Okay. The uh, speaking has three parts. I will give you instructions for each part. For part one, I'd like to get to know you a little bit better and mm -hmm. uh, ask you some questions on a general topic. Sure. Where did you grow up? So I was born in Monterey, California, but I actually grew up in Long Beach, California. What do you like to do for relaxing? I, I like to go swimming. Um, there's a good pool close to my home and I find that it's not only good exercise, but it's a good way to unwind from the stresses of the work week. Let's talk about vacation. Okay. What do you like to do on your vacations from work? I mostly enjoy going sightseeing and checking out a historical city such as Rome. Uh, or doing something active like going to Hawaii for some R&R &R and doing some surfing. How many days do you usually take for a vacation? I usually take about two weeks. Um, just, this, just a month ago I took 14 days and went to Florida to visit a cousin of mine. I usually find that this is enough time to relax and recuperate. What was your favorite vacation until now? That's a tough one. I've had many good vacations. Um, but if I had to choose one, I would have to say that my uh, alpine adventure this past winter to Aspen, Colorado was one of the best. It was snow, the powder was just perfect, so the weather was great and snowboarding was just second to none. If you could go anywhere for a couple of weeks to relax, where would you go? Uh, I think I would go to Costa Rica. Um, based on recent recommendations from good friends of mine, it seems like that's a very nice country to visit and I haven't been there yet. Uh, it sounds like the jungles are amazing and the surf is incredible, so that would be my next destination. Have you visited another continent? Yeah, I sure have. Uh, I've actually visited many countries around the world. I've been all over Europe and uh, I visited South America and Asia as well. What was your opinion about them? I have uh, different but good opinions about each place I've visited. Um, for example, I really enjoy the natural beauty that South America has to offer. Um, and I love different cuisines such as the Korean barbecue, which is one of my favorites. Okay, that is the end of part one. Uh, now we will continue with part two. For part two, here is a card with some questions. Please don't turn that over yet. Okay. Um, here is a pencil and here's some note paper. Uh, you. you will have one minute to uh, think of your answer, write notes if you wish, and then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start and when to stop. Are you ready to begin? Yes, I am. Okay, go ahead, turn over the card, and your one minute preparation time begins now. Okay. Okay, Dave, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Okay. So I'd like to uh, speak about my cousin, Jerry. So, he is one of the smartest people I know. He not only has a degree uh, in math from Stanford University, 
but he owns his own business and has a family, a wife and a father of three children. He's of average height. Uh, he's got blue eyes, blonde hair, a pretty well-built guy who's always smiling. <clears throat> he's my mom's older sister's son, so he's a little bit older than me. Um, Jerry's not only very intelligent, but also very hardworking, which is something I really admire about him. Um, as I mentioned, he not only has a doctorate in math, <clears throat> but he also teaches part-time third and fourth year students at university. Um, he's also come up with some of his own math formulas and theorems. In addition to this, he uses his math and people skills to build uh, his brokerage firm. Um, which he now runs with about 10 staff. <clears throat> and uh, in his business, he makes lucrative investments on behalf of wealthy investors. Um, he's a very good father, and he always pays attention to spending quality time with his wife and especially his three children. Uh, just last week, we went on a picnic together, and I joined them in the park and threw some ball um, with the kids. So, he, Jerry has a very bright future ahead of him. Um, I mean, he's already uh, a very successful businessman and professor, but uh, I really wouldn't be at all surprised if in the near future he will win some kind of award, uh, such as a Nobel Prize even. Okay, Dave, I'm going to stop you there. Your two minutes is up. Uh, so please pass back the note paper, the pencil, mm -hmm. thank you, uh, the card as well, please. Thank you. And now uh, we will continue with part three. For part three, I'm going to ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Are you ready to continue? Sure, let's continue. Let's talk about intelligence. What makes a person intelligent? Well, there are many different criteria for uh, intelligence, and there are many different types of intelligence, but um, I would say a good indicator of general intelligence uh, is the ability to problem solve. So people who are, let's say, better problem solvers than 95% of the population are considered to be intelligent. Is this always true? Well, not always. There's, uh, as I said, different types of intelligence. So let's say if a person, uh, is an extremely gifted painter, um, that ne doesn't necessarily make them a good problem solver, but that is also uh, a form of intelligence. Some people feel that being very intelligent can also be a burden. Do you agree with this notion? Uh, I certainly do. Um, yeah, uh, generally speaking, the most intelligent among us are the ones that society relies on to solve our problems for us. So, for example, my cousin Jerry is faced with these types of issues sometimes when an investment doesn't pan out for one of his clients, then the blame falls on him. <clears throat> it is often agreed that intelligence is very difficult to measure. Why is this? Well, it's because, as I mentioned before, there are many different types of intelligence. So to be more specific, there's kinesthetic intelligence, there's mathematical intelligence, spatial and artistic, just to name a few. And while a person may be considered intelligent in one domain, it won't necessarily make them intelligent in another. What are some of the greatest architectural achievements of the past 50 years? Well, I would consider megastructures such as the uh, Burj Khalifa or the Three Gorges Dam in China to be great engineering marvels of the last half century. How about non-physical achievements? Well, I would say that uh, the most important non-physical achievements of the last half century would have to be the internet, um, but also the mapping of the genome and perhaps virtual reality. What is needed for major accomplishments these days that are internationally recognized? Well, they have to be outstanding, um, to say the least, um, to set themselves apart. I mean, there are nearly 8 billion people on the planet, so it takes 
quite the achievement uh, to stand out from the crowd. So for example, something like uh, a cure for AIDS or uh, a sprinter running the 100 meter dash in under nine seconds. How will the major achievements of today impact future societies? I believe they will have a profound impact on future societies. Um, so for example, we spoke of the internet, or I spoke of the internet. Uh, the tools that we use today, such as uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, are already having a major impact on society as we know it today. And I think this will only continue in the future. Okay, that is the end of part three. That concludes the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. You will have your results in about two weeks' time with the other portions of the test. Have a great rest of your day, Dave. Uh, remember to take your passport. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. So, why do native speakers also need to take the IELTS exam? Well, it's for the same reasons that all students take the IELTS exam. Immigration, education, and work. Say that a person wants to emigrate from Canada to Australia. There is no guarantee that they have a high level of English. Remember, we live in a global society. So, if they have no other proof of English, such as grade 12, they can be required to show IELTS scores. Also, when students study abroad, they have to show a certain level of English. This can be a grade 12 score of 80% or a grade B higher. And if they don't have this, then it needs to be an exam score, such as a band 7 on IELTS. And third, even when native English speakers want to get a job working for an English as second language school, they have to show a high aptitude for the language. Many ESL schools these days require their teachers to have a band 8.5 or 9 on the IELTS exam. Now, why does this candidate score a band 9? This candidate would score a band 9 because, first of all, his speech is natural. Of course, he's a native English, American-born user of the language. So his pronunciation, intonation, enunciation, word choice, use of expressions and idioms, as well as sentence structures are perfect. Secondly, he uses a great range of vocabulary. He has excellent lexical resource. Third, he has great comprehension and coherence. Of course, he understands every question clearly and he answers them accurately. He gives full answers, explanations, and often provides examples. His part two response is complete with lots of detail and good structure. This is what you need to do to get those nice high IELTS band scores. Make sure to watch this video several times and practice at home. Good luck the next time you sit the IELTS. To see over a hundred hours of video lessons like this one, for six original practice exams and a fully interactive course, visit and join us today at www.gieltshelp.com and improve your band score. Subscribe to our channel, click here. Watch more videos, click over here. Or click our IELTS Hero for 100 hours of complete video lessons, six original practice exams, and strategies to pass IELTS.